In this video, we are discussing Bloom filtering pattern overview. Now, what is the Bloom filtering pattern? So, in this case, we will be having some predefined set of values and these values will be known as the hot values. From the records, from the input records, we will be extracting some features and those features will be searched on these hot values. And if the value has been found, if the feature has been found there, then the record will be kept, otherwise the record will be discarded and dismissed. So, that is the main concept in our Bloom filtering pattern overview. So, now let us go for some more discussion on this topic. What is Bloom filtering pattern? This is also a basic filtering pattern, but it has unique evaluation function for each record. To extract the feature of each and every record, we are supposed to have some unique evaluation function. In this pattern, we can filter those records which are present in some predefined set of values. And these predefined set of values will be known as hot values. So, we will be having some predefined set of values and that set will be known as a hot value set. So, for each record, it finds the feature of that record. If it is present in the hot value set, then the record will be kept. Otherwise, the record will be discarded and it will be ignored. So, in this way, the filtering will take place. So, Bloom filtering criteria. So, let us go for a summarization. So, there are some criteria for Bloom filtering. So, what are the criteria? Here you have mentioned four such criteria. Let me discuss one by one. So, first one is that data can be separated into different records. So, a data can be separated into multiple different records according to our requirement. An extracted feature from the records that could be in a set of hot values. So, some evaluation function will be there with the help of which this feature value will be extracted from each and every records and that will be searched onto some set of hot values. There is a set of predefined hot values. So, we will be having some predefined hot values. So, there this searching will be done. Sometimes some unwanted data can be there after filtering also and it is also acceptable. So, if there is some unwanted data is there yeah, after filtering, then also the data will be accepted. So, these are the Bloom filtering criteria. Bloom filtering structure. To perform the Bloom filtering job, at first we need to train our system from the data set. So, at first the model, the, the model will be trained with some data set. So, when the training will be done, then we require a huge number of data sets so that my model can be trained in a proper way. So, after completing the training, it generates a data and it will be stored onto the HDFS. So, the after completion of the training, the model will generate some data and those data will be stored onto our HDFS. So, this is our phase number one. In the second phase, when the actual MR task is performed, it uses the intermediate data which was stored in, in our phase number 1 in HDFS, then that particular data set and those values which is saved, which are saved on this HDFS will be accessed. Now, here we are having one diagram for the better understanding. So, we had two phases, phase 1 and phase 2. So, now phase 1 is actually the step 1. So, step 1 means the filter training. We are having the input split, we are having a huge data set. So, the data set will be split into multiple input splits. So, that input split will be available to the Bloom filter training. So, this input split will make this Bloom filter model to be trained and it will produce some outputs and the output will be saved on the output file on the HDFS. Now, we are having the phase number 2 that is our step 2. So, step 2 Bloom filtering via MapReduce. Now, the MapReduce tasks will be coming in the scene. So, input split, bloom filter mapper and this bloom filter mapper will refer load filter from distributed cache and then the bloom filter test will take place. Now, the test will have two outputs. One is the maybe and the one is the no. So, no means the respective record will be discarded, maybe means it will be stored onto the output files. We are having multiple mappers are there, there is a bloom filter mapper. So, they will be working in parallel simultaneously on multiple input splits. So, that is the basic concepts of bloom filtering criteria in our MapReduce. So, thanks for watching this video.